Welcome. In this video, I will show you how to set up a new Unity project so that it is optimized for the development of an Oculus Quest 2 app. This tutorial will focus specifically on configuring your project and build settings so that your project is set up to perform well on the Quest before you begin development of your app. There are also a number of optimizations to consider during development when creating assets and scripts. For example, you will need to be fairly conservative with the amount and size of textures or the complexity of 3D models and shaders. I will cover these considerations in another video, however. Before we get started, I will assume that you have set up your quest for development and that you have Unity already installed with the correct Android build support modules. If not, you may want to take a look at my tutorial series. Get started with Oculus Quest 2 development. You'll find a link in the description. Also, please be aware, I am using Unity version 2021 LTS in this tutorial, running on a Windows 10 PC. OK, so let's get on with it. First, open the Unity Hub and click the New Projects button. With the editor version set to 2021, select 3D URP from the template list. URP or more fully Universal Render Pipeline is recommended for Oculus Quest development. I'm aware that currently URP is not supported by some assets and toolkits. If this affects your project, then it's okay to use the built-in render pipeline, provided that you stick mostly to mobile-friendly, single-pass shaders. The HDRP or High Definition Render Pipeline is definitely not suitable for the Quest, however. Now, enter a project name and click Create Project. The Unity Editor may take some time to launch. Ensure your headset is switched on and connected to your PC. Now that the editor is loaded, the first thing we want to do is configure the build settings. In the top menu, go to File and then Build Settings. In the Build Settings window, go to the platform list on the left and click on Android. Click the Switch Platform button. This will trigger a re-import of all your project's assets so that they are in a format suitable for the Android platform. OK, the conversion to the Android platform has finished. There are still a couple of quick changes that we want to make to the build settings, however. First, we want to set texture compression to ASTC, which stands for Adaptive Scalable Texture Compression. Now go to Run Device and click on the drop-down list. If your quest is properly connected, it should appear as an item in the drop-down. Select it. OK, we are finished here. Click the Player Settings button. The Project Settings window should appear, with the Player section selected. There are some Product Info fields at the top of the Player section, including Company Name, Product Name and the Version Number. Make sure these are correct for your app. Check that the Android Settings tab is selected. Under Android Settings, make sure that the Other Settings subsection is expanded. Under Rendering, make sure the colour space is set to Linear. In the Graphics API list, make sure only OpenGLES 3 is present. Delete any other APIs. OK, let's scroll down through the settings a little. Make sure that Multi-Threaded Rendering, Static Batching and Compute Skinning are all ticked. Notice there is another setting for the Texture Compression format. This sets the default format for compressed textures. Let's set this to ASTC also. Now scroll down to the Identification section. There is a Package Name field here that is required in order to deploy your app. You can either allow Unity to generate a default package name based on the company and product info that you supplied earlier or you can enter your own package name. However, you must follow the convention com.yourcompanyname Dot your product name. Next, set the minimum API level to Android 6 Marshmallow API level 23. We need to install a plugin that enables us to configure our project specifically for Oculus Quest development. From the sidebar of the project settings window, select XR Plugin Management. Click Install XR Plugin Management. 
Once the XR plugin management system has finished installing, make sure the Android settings tab is selected. Now tick the Oculus checkbox. This will install the Oculus plugin. Next select the Windows tab and tick the Oculus checkbox here also. The Windows plugin will allow you to test your VR creations from the Unity editor with your headset connected to your PC. Now, go to XR Plugin Management in the left sidebar. Make sure that it's expanded. You will notice that the Oculus plugin is listed underneath. Select it. Click on the Android Platform tab. Make sure you set Stereo Rendering Mode to Multi View. This is similar to the Single Pass Instance option available for PC VR, which is generally the quickest method for rendering stereo images. I've dropped a link in the description that provides an overview of how Single Pass Stereo VR rendering works. Next, we want to optimise the quality settings. Select Quality from the left sidebar of the Project Settings window. Notice that at the top of the Quality section, there are a number of quality levels. Various platforms can be assigned a specific quality level. We are working solely with the Quest 2, which is an Android platform. We can see that the Android platform has been assigned the balanced quality level. So, for the sake of clarity, we will remove the other quality levels. Now, the first setting that we will change is the V-Sync count. We want to set this to Don't Sync, since the Oculus runtime handles its own V-Sync. Go to Anisotropic Textures and set it to Disabled. Finally, set Skin Weights to Two Bones. OK, let's close the Project Settings window for now. Go to the Project tab and make sure the Assets folder is expanded. Inside of Assets, click on the Settings folder. I'm just going to reduce the icon size in the Project tab in order to see the asset names better. OK. So this settings folder is where all the render pipeline asset files live. I'm going to clean things up by deleting the unused render pipeline assets that don't relate to the balance quality level. Now, click on the URP balance renderer asset. Go to the inspector panel on the right side of the editor. Under post processing, untick the enabled checkbox. You should know that post processing is generally to be avoided on the quest as its graphics architecture does not work well with it. Notice that under Render Features, there is an SSAO component. SSAO stands for Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. Remove this component completely by clicking on the three dots in the corner and selecting Remove from the drop-down menu. Since we are not using post-processing, it is a good idea to remove any post-processing elements from your scenes. For this reason, I am deleting the global volume game object from my scene. OK, now let's select the URP balanced asset. Go to the inspector panel and make changes to the following settings. Disable terrain holes. Under the quality section, disable HDR. Incidentally, HDR means high dynamic range. Click on the anti-aliasing drop down menu. The MSAA stands for Multi-Sample Anti-Aliasing. To be honest, leaving anti-aliasing as disabled will result in the edges of your 3D objects looking very jagged, so you will probably want to use it to some degree, but do not set it to the maximum 8x level on the Quest. 4x is a good setting, balancing visual quality with performance. I'm not doing anything with the lighting settings, but that's because I try not to use any real-time lights when developing for the quest. I set all my lights to baked and pre-baked light maps for every scene. I highly recommend that you use baked and static lighting wherever possible when working with the quest. Lastly, under shadows, I disable soft shadows. Okay, since we have previously deleted some render pipeline assets, there is just one thing that I want to check. Please go to the top menu Select Edit, and then Project Settings. In the Project Settings window, select Graphics from the left sidebar. Under Scriptable Render Pipeline Settings, check that the URP Balanced Asset is attached. OK, that's it for the Render Pipeline Settings. You can close the Project Settings window.
Okay, so the settings that I've applied thus far are what I would use during the early stages of developing a Quest app. There are a few further optimizations that I would add once I am closer to producing a final build however. I will show you these now. The reason why I would not apply the following optimizations immediately is that they tend to lengthen the build time considerably. At the start of a project, you want to be able to iterate your app as quickly as possible, so long build times would be an annoyance. Anyway, let's get on with it. The first optimization requires an optional editor module called Windows Build Support IL2CPP. Unless you requested it, this module would not have been installed during the initial installation of your Unity editor. This is not a problem. I will show you how to install the IL2CPP module now. First, close the Unity editor and open the Unity Hub. Click on Installs in the left sidebar. A list of currently installed Unity editors will appear in the main panel. Go to the Unity editor that you are using for your Quest project and click on the cog icon. A drop down menu will appear. Click Add Modules. A list of modules will appear. Scroll down the list until you see Windows Build Support IL to CPP. Tick the checkbox next to it and then click the Install button. The module will install. Once the installation is complete, select Projects from the left sidebar. Now, reopen the project that you were working on before. We are back in the Unity Editor. We need to return to the Project Settings window. So, once again, go to the top menu bar, click on Edit and then Project Settings. Select the Player section from the left sidebar of the Project Settings window. From the Player section, expand the Other Settings subsection. Scroll down until you come to a bunch of settings grouped under Configuration. You will notice that the scripting backend is set to Mono. Click on the drop down menu here and change the scripting backend to IL2CPP. You have probably been wondering what IL to CPP means. It stands for Intermediate Language to C++. I will drop a link to an overview in the description. For now, it's enough to know that IL to CPP builds a binary that executes faster than the mono alternative. Now, under Target Architecture, untick the ARM v7 checkbox and tick ARM64 instead. Now scroll down again until you reach the Optimizations section. Tick the Optimize Mesh Data checkbox. For the last optimization, in the left sidebar, expand XR Plugin Management. Underneath it, click on Oculus. In the Oculus settings, tick the Low Overhead Mode checkbox. I would enable this particular setting only once you are close to finalizing your app as apparently it's possible that low overhead mode could introduce graphical glitches, although I have not seen this happen myself. And with that, we have come to the end of this tutorial. I hope that it provides a good foundation for creating smoother running quest apps. Goodbye and happy questing.